everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a follow-up service call for a fresh air intake system. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. In my previous visit, this system wasn't starting. I kind of smacked it and got it to go by pressing the hand button for this motor starter system right here. This is made by Eaton, also known as Cutler Hammer. And as you can tell, it is a lot quieter here. This unit itself was making crazy noise. And the starter itself was making crazy noise and I'll show you guys a video. electrician came and they changed this disconnect box this is all rusted up full of water and I came in and I replaced the motor starter I replaced the belt I aligned everything I cleaned out the fan there was so many like there was like insulation from inside that just got sucked in and got caked up on there so now they have a lot better airflow also it's a lot quieter because I found the bearings were completely like dried out when I was adding grease to it which I did I added grease it was literally like dust coming out but anyways it's a lot quieter it's a lot better but one thing is that when I changed this motor starter right for some reason it didn't come these little overload heaters so I ordered from Eaton and I got the exact part and I'm going to show you guys how to replace the overload contacts on a motor starter. Turn this off and let's kill the power. We also have a little flat head here. Let's loosen that up and try to open up this cover. There we go. Here's the motor starter that I changed. It's an exact replacement. Came with the contactor and this assembly here to hold the heaters but for, and with the adjustment but for some reason it didn't come with the three heaters itself this is a three-phase system the wiring is nice and neat I even found some systems uh, some wires like this one it was just taped off it was a whole mess so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to replace these heaters without replacing the whole motor starter sometimes they go bad the reason I'm changing them is because I had to take out the old ones from the old motor starter and if you're changing all of this and we got this unit revived it only makes sense to have everything new here this is what the overload some people call them heaters looks like it's very very simple to change definitely want to upgrade don't want to leave a couple old things with something new over here the box is old but it's all about what's what's on the inside you know what they say when it comes to personality and relationship it's what matters on the inside right <laughs> So basically in car terms, we got a sleeper here. We got an old body, but everything inside is nice and neat and clean. So I'm gonna show you guys how to replace this. First things first, let's put the system on volts. Power comes from up here. Let's just confirm there's no power coming in. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Wherever I tested, you would have 208 across each two legs. Or you can go from one leg to, let's say, ground. This will be a little clear. Basically, a terminal to metal. You're good to go. Make sure you have a good ground as well. All right, so we, we proved we have no voltage. So now we are safe to work. And I'm gonna show you just how easy this is. All right, you actually don't need to disconnect any wires. There's two Phillips screws 
So you're just literally going to loosen those up. Okay. This is the same exact one, so you don't have to worry about anything. Look at that. Two screws and it's out. They definitely look a bit rusty over here. Ooh, and they're definitely hot. Definitely uh, time for something new. There's no reason to not change all that. Couldn't find this box for 24 volts. But hey, listen, this thing is making a world of a difference. These are all the same. So we're just gonna loosen up the two screws for each one. And we're gonna pull it out. Okay, and one more. Sometimes these burn out, they fail, but the motor starter is actually still good. So this is something you want to check. Make sure you got continuity across, right? They're open. You know it's done. And sometimes this is your problem. So you could just change that. And it'll be to go, good to go. So we're gonna change all these, which looks like there was some water damage. And we're gonna put in three new ones. So I'm just gonna slide this in. Let's try to get the screw to align like this. You can kind of see that started. Let's tighten up this one, make sure it catches the screws. Make sure this is tight. That went. nice and snug don't go crazy and we're off to the next one very very simple make sure the screw lines up there let me tighten it down just do a little bit so then the other side is even okay oops is that tight oh now it's going in yeah you want to make sure everything is nice and tight and snug and everything is in those connections create high amperage you don't want that all right one more that looks like that caught and you can see the color difference too the other ones look a little yellowish there was like some water damage but it's a, quite the huge difference that is awesome so, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's a bit of a quiet color difference. This all matches now, and they're going to be good to go. All right, just going to put this cover on. Okay, switch to our flathead. Right there, closed up. And let's lock it. All right, cool. Turn this on, power, and hand. And it is a lot quieter. Here are the installation instructions. I'm gonna take a picture so you guys can see, but it says disconnect power, insert all heater packs, and set before tightening any screws. Make sure they're aligned. And it says no three heater packs. The same number must be installed with the overload relay. So here's your housing for your, this is actually your overload relay. And over here, this is going to be your heaters, your overloads. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna take a picture so you guys can see. That's how you pretty much change the heaters for your overload relay side of your motor contact there. And honestly, this is so much better here. Oh man, what a difference. I'm really glad that we were able to revive this unit. The amount of racket this used to cause was unbelievable. With the bearings being dry like that, if that failed, I mean, they were already thinking like that's it, it's time to replace the unit. Even I said so, it was kind of ridiculous, but like this, we're able to give it some life and yeah that's pretty much it if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week i'll catch you all next time